Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss status register of Intel's microprocessor. I have already created a detailed video on status register of uh, it, Intel's 8086, which is around 40 minutes. And uh, in this video tutorial, I'm, I'm I'm trying to summarize all the basic concepts because this video is related to a course which is in which we have already discussed a status register but we have discussed a status register uh, in respect of tick 18f microcontroller so i hope the viewers of this video tutorial and the students are quite aware about uh, what is a status register what is its function but i'm trying to uh, that is that is the reason i'm trying to summarize the, this video tutorial but still if you are interested and want to know the detail function of every single bit, you can go that detailed video tutorial and I'm going to give the link on this right now, this instant, right? So if you want to go and see uh, the detail of this uh, status register, you can go and watch that video tutorial. It's around 40 minutes, right? But uh, as far as you're concerned uh, that uh, you want to know what is the function of every single bit, I'm just trying to summarize that function in this video tutorial. Right, so let's start our video tutorial. So status register, it is also known as what? Flag register. I hope you remember uh, this. These are the bits which we uh, can see that uh, the, as we are talking about 86 flag register or status register. So basically uh, it will have 16 bits because 86 is a 16 bit processor, but out of those 16 bits, only few of them are implemented. And I'm going to share these details a uh, flag register, it's a 16 bit individual bit is known as a flag. We have already discussed this thing earlier in the 18 f microcontrollers. And then six status flags are discussed here, uh, which are basically, there, there are six bits, which basically shows certain statuses. And what are those flags? I'm going to discuss it. Three control flags. That means uh, out of 16 flags, three, six are status flags and three are control flags. So control flags, they do have certain control mechanism and we can actually control various things of 86 microprocessor using these three uh, control flags. And we're gonna discuss them in this video tutorial. Then of course, six and three, it becomes nine, but out of 16, th there are still seven bits and you can see in this chart, these are not implemented. These are not used. So only nine flags are used in flag register or a status register. Let's discuss them one by one. First of all, very far of them is basically carry flag and it becomes one when there is a carry out from the most significant bit of the result. Otherwise it is zero and it, it, it is goes to addition operation. Uh, carry flag, it's quite easy to understand whenever you perform addition operation, uh, if your result, if, for example, if you are performing a uh, 16 bit operation, because we are talking about six, 86 microprocessor, the 16 bit numbers are added, right? But your results appear in 17 bits. That means you won't have uh, sufficient information uh, or suffi sufficient bits to uh, show the full information. And that is why carry flag is used, right? Similarly, in case of subtraction operation, if you uh, subtract a larger number uh, from a smaller number, what is going to happen? You need to take a borrow and borrow is indicated in carry flag. We have discussed this thing in pk f as well. I hope you have understand the concept of carry flag. Let's move the next flag. Next flag is what parity flag. Parity flag, it checks for the parity, whether uh, in the most recent result, I mean, if your arithmetic and logical operation is performed, so whatever the recent result, you will check this uh, result and it starts to one if there is an even parity. So th this parity flag is showing what even parity. Whenever result have even parity, it will be one. If has it has odd parity, it will remain zero, right? And what is even parity and what is odd parity? So number of ones should be even. For example, I, I'm saying, I'm talking about uh, uh, binary number three, right? So three can be written as what? Zero, zero, one, three. I'm just talking about four bits. So how many number of ones? These are just two. So this is what? Two, one. So this is even, right? For example, if I'm talking about uh, six or let's say seven, right? So what is going to happen? <laughs> For seven, you will have zero triple one, right? That means you have three ones. That is odd parity. So this is the meaning of odd parity. So 
for three, microprocessor will indicate this parity flag is one because it is even parity for seven. It will be what? One because it will be remain zero because it will be odd parity. I hope you have understand the concept of uh, status registers parity flag, right? Let's go and discuss the next flag, which is auxiliary flag. If you remember, we have already discussed the concept of what concept of uh, uh, digital carry in pic 18F microcontroller. When we were studying pic 18F microcontroller, uh, those uh, things we have already discussed as uh, digital carry. So digital carry and auxiliary carry has same meaning and it is related to addition and subtraction as it was related to carry flag, right? So what is it sets to one if there is an auxiliary carry or digital carry, right? Or it remains zero if there is no auxiliary carry. And what is auxiliary carry? Auxiliary carry is basically carry out from D3 to D4 bit. For example, uh, if we are talking about eight bit numbers, so we know that first four bit are known as one hexadecimal number and other four bits are known as other hexadecimal number. So if there is a carry from one hexadecimal to another hexadecimal, that basically is uh, called uh, auxiliary carry or digital carry. Or you can say the carry from third bit to fourth bit is basically auxiliary carry, right? So carry out from one hexadecimal symbol to other hexadecimal symbol, I've already explained you, or carry out from lower nibble to higher nibble, this is the thing. And it sets to one if there is a borrowing. Okay, in subtraction operation, if you are subtracting a larger nibble uh, from a lower nibble, right? For my smaller nibble, what is going to happen? You need to take a borrow from D4 bit to D3 bit, and that will also be indicated in auxiliary carry, right? So auxiliary carry is like a digital carry in PK18F microcontroller. Okay, let's discuss the zero flag. It's quite similar. If your result is zero, then it will become one. Otherwise, it will remain zero, right? So if your result is zero, you will have to, you, your zero flag will automatically equal to one. Sign flag. If your result is negative, it will be uh, one and it will uh, indicate the most recent result sign. So result is negative, it will become one. If re result is positive, uh, sign flag would be zero. Overflow, overflow flag we have also discussed in PIC18F microcontroller. If you remember, if you are if you are adding two numbers, and for example, I'm adding two 16-bit numbers, and their sum becomes around 18 bits. Can you explain it? Can you put that number in 16 bits? No, no. Why? Because your range is expiring, and this overflow is basically indicates for sign numbers. We have already discussed this thing in picating F microcontroller. And still, if you need uh, detail of it, you can go to detail a lecture of status register of Intel at 86. But uh, I hope you remember the concept. If you exceed the range, right? Then that means you are exceeding the range of number of bits, right? So you, you need a you need a uh, indication uh, by microcontroller that microcontroller will let you know, man, you are using a big number, which is not uh, to be sufficient for uh, the number bit size of my given microcontroller. So that flag is basically what overflow flag, right? And it starts to one sign result is out of range. As I, as I told you, it applicable. It is applicable only for sign results. If sign result is out of range, then overflow fl flag would become high. Otherwise it will remain zero. Okay, now we are moving towards control flags. The very first flag, which we haven't discussed in uh, pic 18 f microcontroller. So this is something new, craft flag. It is intentionally set to one to force the microprocessor enter into the single step mode, right? What is single step mode? First discuss it and let, let, then we come back to this craft flag. In this mode, microprocessor executes the only instruction jumps to a special service routine program to determine the effect of executed instruction. And that's very important for debugging, right? You know that normally microcontroller or microprocessor are executing line by line, line by line, line by line, right? But microcontroller will execute complete program. But in single step mode, if your microcontroller or microprocessor is in single step mode, then microcontroller will execute only single line or only one line and jumps to a service, special service routine program to determine the effect of executed instruction. That means we want to check whether our controller 
or our microprocessor is working in right direction or not? Are we achieving the right results or not? That is what known as debugging, right? So that means whenever we want to debug the code automatically by a microprocessor, so microprocessor have a special uh, mode, which is name is a single step mode, right? So traffic flag, what it does, whenever you want that microprocessor should be in a single step mode, what do you need to do? You need to make that flag high. And that is why it is known as control flag because we can actually control the uh, mode of microcontroller, right? That is what ref flag, right? Like your microcontroller is trapped in it because once it execute instruction, it will go and debug it. It will check the effect of that instruction. That means microcontroller is trapped inside one instruction, right? And that is why this flag is known as trap flag. Okay, next flag, which is interrupt flag. Okay, let's discuss. This flag is used to disable or enable the in, in maskable interrupts if it is desired by the programmer to deal with the maskable interrupt. Programmer can enable it by setting IFE2 equal to one. If programmer wants to disable the micro uh, maskable interrupts, uh, then he or she can place just zero in this. So this is one of the thing that we need to know. Uh, uh, if you remember in pick 18 f microcontroller uh, that there are some interrupts which can be disabled, right? Maskable means you can disable the interrupt, right? So there are some interrupts which are generally masked or generally disabled. So you can actually enable them just by placing one in this interrupt flag. So this is kind of GIE of pick 18 f microcontroller. Like when we were discussing uh, pick 18 f microcontroller, there was a global interrupt enable. If you make that specific bit one, then your interrupts are enabled. So this is the similar kind of flag, right? If you, there is no special flag register or f interrupt register inside uh, 86 microprocessor. It is quite basic microprocessor. So in flag register, we have a control flag, which is known as interrupt flag. And if you want to mask or unmask, or if you want to a mask means disable, right? If you want to disable or enable interrupt, then you can use this interrupt flag. I hope you have understood the concept of interrupt flag. <laughs> then we come to the direction flag. Okay, this is something which is something new and we will discuss it when we come to this string operation, but it is related to string operation. So far, we haven't discussed anything about string operation, but I'm just explaining it summarizely because I'm covering a summarized brief view of flag register. It is related to a string operation. Whenever a string operation automatically decrease the address, it is equal to one. And string data transfer occurs from high address to lower address. If it is zero, then string instructions automatically increase the address. Uh, you know that we have discussed that there are various data types, data formats like ASCII, VCD in AT86 or a bk f microcontroller. So there is one more data type which is available called string instructions, right? Which we are going to cover when we are going to see the instruction set of Intel's AT86 microprocessor, right? So in that string instruction, uh, whenever data transfer occurs from higher to lower address, right? So you need to make that uh, uh, flag is equal to one, right? So it's like we are controlling the direction. First, we can actually perform the function on higher address than lower address, right? Otherwise you can go in reverse direction, right? You can go uh, to the lower address and then to higher address. That is a string data transfer. And what is that we are going to see in the, in the instruction set of the 18 uh, sorry, 86 microcontroller, but, or 86 microprocessor, but you need to know the direction flag can actually control the direction of how you will go. Either you are going from higher to lower or lower to higher side, right? So I hope you have understand the concept of direction flag It is just controlling because that is why it is called control flag, right? Because if you make it one, that means you will go from higher to lower. If you make it zero, that means from you will go from lower address to higher address. So this is the concept of direction flag. I hope you have understand the concept of direction flag. Still, if you have any confusion or query, you can post them in uh, comment section. Thank you so much for listening.